Hey friends, how's it going? Beautiful day. You'll hear a lot of harvesting action. It's definitely that time of the year. Uh, and what that means for me is I got to cut some more firewood. Um, I have enough here to get me through the year, but I always want to be a year or two ahead. So we're going cutting. What am I going to use today? Well, Buckin left me this 372 original edition when he was here. Um, I've never owned an original edition 372. In fact, friends, I've never owned any 372. Bucking being the kind of guy he is, he shows up here and he pulls this thing out. Um, it's in nice shape. I did give it a little bit of a cleaning. It does need some odds and ends. It was a logging saw. Um, any of you that have been around logging saws know they, they need work usually. They've been run a lot. Uh, that's one thing about this, this genre hobby business. Um, there's so many different kinds of cutters and, and so many, you know, some guys just cut once or twice a year. Some guys cut firewood all the time. Um, homeowners like me that cut firewood, there's loggers, there's, uh, you know, there's guys that, that just buck on a landing all day. There's guys that climb, there's arborists. Okay. I tend to find that saws that have been logged with, I don't care if it's East coast, West coast, no coast, like where I live. These are the saws that get the most use because these guys cut year round. Okay. So this thing, I went over it a little here and there. It needs a few little things, but I think it's going to run good enough today that I want to put some miles on it and just cut with it before we eventually poured it, right? I want to, this is going to be a saw that's in my, in my, uh, you know, that's going to be one of my saws that I use all the time. I, I've always wanted a 372 and uh, this is going to be the one, especially because my buddy gave it to me. Okay, friends, so what we're doing today is uh, I'm going to bar this up. I want to talk to you guys about something. I'm going to bring you guys in. Chains. Um, different kinds of chains, profiles, sharpening. I see a lot of stuff on the YouTubes. Um, friends, if you are going to run power saws, if you're going to port power saws, especially if you're going to port, um, put the time in, friends, and learn how to file a chain. Um, I see it all the time. A guy will build a really nasty saw and, and the chain's just, eh, and the saw is capable of so much more. Friends, it's like building a drag car and not having slicks on it. If you can't put the power to the ground, i.e. if you can't put the power to the wood, um, what, you know, what's the point? So, and believe me, friends, I was not always a good sharpener. Um, the reason I found YouTube and the chainsaw world on YouTube was I needed to learn how to sharpen. And of course, um, I found videos that told me to use gadgets, gizmos, counting strokes, micrometers to make every cutter the same length. I tried all that stuff, friends, and it did not work. <laughs> None of it did. Then I found a bucket video. And what did I learn? Practice, friends. Practice, practice, practice. Anyhow, I'm going to bring you guys in close. There's a lot of, lot of folks talking about this C85 chain. Um, our friend, Adam, mailed us some of this. And he said, what do you think of it? So I've been running this chain for a couple months now. Um, this is the last brand new one I have. I want to talk about this chain and put a loop of it on this saw. And uh, let's do uh, let's do a little cut off. Actually, friends, I'm gonna put a loop of this chain on Buckins 266. Cut with it, and then let's talk about it. <laughs> okay, friends, let's talk about this chain, the C83. I heard this is a fast chain. Or a couple people said that and. I thought, okay. Kind of looks like EXL. Here. Okay. Kind of looks like EXL. Quite a bit of hook. Okay. It's kind of, it's ground a lot like the Holtz Forma, actually. There you go. Okay. Now, friends, and I, I'm not, I don't like to be negative, but I'm a straight shooter, and I'll tell you guys what I think. Um, this chain not impressed with it notice this gullet they left out here friends okay see right here um i think that's the reason why this chain does not cut for me uh i had a lot of comments because again friends i was going to the wood pile 
Okay, I grabbed two fresh rolls of this chain. I put them on my saws. Let's let's go cut with a stock chain and get the project going, which to me is, sorry, I'm gonna fix you guys here. When I get a new chain out of the box, that's the slowest that chain will ever cut, okay? As you sharpen more and more and get your cutters back, okay? Once your cutter hits about here, oh, she's fast, okay? Uh, a stock chain, if you're, and I, I learned this years ago, friends, if your best cutting chain is a stock chain, you just haven't put enough time in filing, okay? So, and again, I, I appreciate getting sent this chain and uh it just didn't work for me cutting ash especially hardwood with this chain our ash here is really hard um this stuff was really really slow friends cutting in in our hardwoods here um it almost felt like it was dull right away but it wasn't it was it was holding an edge it just i really think that the profile of this chain right here was what was holding it back so i'm going to show you guys so that if you're having problems with your chain profiles, let's grab this saw. If you're having problems, okay, here's what I did. Let's see if we can get this on here. Notice, friends, I took the gullet out, okay? Same amount of hook, but I took the gullet out, friends, okay? The rakers are the same height as they were stock, okay? And this is on buck and saw. We're going to go and run this today. So let's make a couple of cuts, friends. And uh, this is non-science science, but uh, the first, like I said, the first roll of this stuff, okay, is a C83 X cut. I've never run Husqvarna chains. I've run every kind of chain, uh, Sandvik. What have I run? Uh, Sandvik, the, uh, is, do they even make chain? I don't even know, friends. But I've run your still Rapid Super and all the different Oregon pitches, and uh, I typically, EXL is the fastest chain out of the box, I think, friends, for me, for my wood and my, what I'm running, okay? So, I, I the first loop of this chain, I was like, wow, this, this stuff's not cutting very good. The second loop was the same as the first, so I stopped right there, and I thought, I better make you guys a video, just in case you're having the same problem. Okay, I'm going to make a couple cuts here um with a stock chain and then this tin manized hand file chain i really don't grind anymore friends i pretty much just hand file so um i'm glad i put the time in years and years and years i've been hand filing now to get proficient at it okay let's make a couple cuts okay friends same c83 chain hand filed okay friends and again if you if you're equally sharp on both sides it'll cut straight
know what's funny, friends? That's the nicest cutting C85 I've had so far. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Could you guys hear a difference? I could. Uh, C85 was pulling more RPM. Um, didn't seem to be pulling as large of a chip though. So again, have your own experience, friends. This is my experience and my experience is that C85 is leaving something to be desired. Um, I always find my custom hand files are better for my wood. Well, there you go. What more can I say? The stock C83. It's okay, I guess, but it's not anywhere near as fast as a as a quick hand file. Um, EXL's pretty close, but even that, I can I can do a little bit better. Remember, friends, there's a reason why uh, when you watch a logger cut, their cuts are smooth. They don't bog the saw down. That's 20, 25 years on a power saw, friends. Um, a lot of people, when they see a logger cutting, they go, oh, that must be softwood. It, it's actually not, friends. The chain is that sharp. Um, I know this now. I had the pleasure, I had the pleasure of running some of Bakken's square grinds and even his hand files while he was here. And friends, I'm gonna tell you something. The man's chains were fast. Super, super, super fast. So I'm just gonna say it straight up. Uh, put the time in, put the time in, learn how to hand file and you will not be sorry. Um, the difference in wear and tear on your body when you don't have to lean on the saw, dog it in and pull and yank and standing up and bucking is so much easier on your back. At least it is on mine. Um, I'm a tall fella and uh, kneeling down cutting all the time. I mean, I do, uh, you know, there are scenarios where you have to run your saw that way, but if I can, if I can stay away from that, I'm going to do it every time. So, put this on. I always forget the outer bar plate on this and then it doesn't oil very nicely. Okay, friends, so I'm going to go cut some firewood. I really just wanted to take the time and show you guys that. Um, learn how to file. It will take years. It took me years anyways. And I mean, I ain't the, I ain't the sharpest knife in the drawer, but um, learn how to file. Throw away your file guides and just straight hand file everything. I used to grind, round grind. Um, that was okay. But still, my hand files are way sharper than my grinds with, with the types of grinders that I own. Um, I have several of them now. Okay. There we go. Tighten this up. Nothing's better than nothing's better than spending a little bit of time on a chain and then putting it in the wood. And friends, that ash is hard. Okay, that's not softwood, um, and it's been sitting on the ground a couple months now. However long since we cut it, it's that's not good stuff. That first cut I made on the end of the log, um, that was a good test for my for my hand file. Now the other thing is, friends, uh, chit or cutter longevity. Let's talk about that. Um, I saw Buck and mention it briefly in a video that he did last week, and this is something that used to plague me. So if you're hand filing, you're having a hard time. I'm gonna show you guys this. Now friends, this chain, okay? This chain has about a half a tank on it. I put a half a tank on this before I did the cutoff because in the nature, you know, time, friends. I only have so much time in the day and it's like, ah, we'll see. Now friends, if you look at these cutters here, see how they're straight, okay? Let's see if I can find one that I didn't get quite perfect. Here, there's one. Okay, that's the only one I can find. This one's slightly, slightly round, friends. Just slightly. 
If your cutters are round like that, what ends up happening is they'll dull way quicker, okay? Now this thing's still nice and sharp. You can feel it, okay? So if you're having trouble with your chains going, your hand files going dull right away, stay on the cutter longer till that, till that burr comes off, friends. You'll get a little burr that comes off and then you're, oh, you're sharp, okay? So there you go. Once again, C83, just like all stock chains, it's not that fast, friends. Not for me anyways. Um, and I'm not... I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to show off or, or anything like that, but I thought it needed to be said. I also don't like the Holtz Forma chain out of the box, friends. I really don't, but I like it filed, okay? And I run the Holtz Forma chain. Let's move you guys over here. Okay. Um, I really like the steel chain, the steel uh, RS. I ran that for years. My problem is with that chain, the cutter's really big. Those chains don't cut particularly fast till they're about halfway down. Then they're uh, like a rocket ship. They hold their edge really well. So it's kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other with the uh, with the steel chain. But my problem is around here, the steel rapid super chains are really expensive. So um, I tend to not run those. Um, my favorite chain right now is uh, Oregon EXL off the roll um, out of the box that stuff's pretty fast I would say that's the fastest of all the stock chains I haven't run that still hexa chain I'm uh, I'm not I'm not really into to gadgets and gimmicks maybe that does work I don't know again friends I only comment on things that I've personally done on this channel I, I don't like speculating I haven't run that chain um, some guys tell me it's fast. Uh, a lot of guys I know that can file say it's not that fast. So I'll have to get some one day and maybe try it. But anyhow, friends, I'm going firewooding, which is my favorite thing to do. Um, live through your own experience, friends. Us folks up here on YouTube, um, we're just sharing, or at least I am. I'm just sharing my experience with you. I hope you take the time to learn this stuff for yourself. Maybe maybe um maybe your hand files aren't as fast as an off the roll chain that's okay that just means you need to put more time in on the file just sit there and file and file and file you'll get that muscle memory and eventually you'll just file um it took me a long time friends uh, i used to really muscle my sharpening and i ruined many chains so um yeah friends please um if if you're gonna if you're gonna watch youtube and get your info Please find somebody that can sharpen a chain. There's <laughs> chain sharpening is such an easy thing. It's not that difficult to learn. It takes time, but it's all in the chain, friends. It's all in the filing. You can have the fastest ported saw. If it ain't sharp, it's not gonna look very good. My first couple videos with this saw, those were off the roll C83 chains, and they were horrible, friends. Uh, this saw was not looking that great. A uh, bunch of my buddies were laughing. They're like, oh, you need to drop your rakers, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, that's an off-the-roll chain. The rakers were not high either. I checked the rakers. They're just not that sharp, friends. So, anyhow, hope you enjoy this video. And uh, thanks for watching. Take her easy. Let's go cutting firewood. Later.